Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm a statistical ecologist at a U.S. geological survey lab called Patuxent Wildlife Research Center. I'm going to talk about a class of models that I work on, these, these spatial capture recapture models, which have some applicability to certain problems in computational sustainability. Some were hit on by Angela Fuller, and then Amrita gave a poster and a talk yesterday. And Dana Morin has a poster, and she's going to give a two-minute um, lightning talk. Um, <clears throat> and I'm talking more really about the modeling bits of this. Now, capture recapture is a class of models we deal a lot with in statistical ecology. And they have been the cornerstone of the empirical study of populations for many decades. The basic idea of capture recapture is we, we repeatedly sample a population. This might not be on. It's not advancing. The uh, switch on the side. Uh, it's always the switch on the side. <laughs> so, so did somebody pull the, uh, this does not count against me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not advancing. No, it's not. Maybe just use the keyboard. Keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Use the keyboard. Yeah. I'll okay. change the battery. Just the... So that's not advancing either. Uh, and then, okay, is that why that wasn't working? Probably. Okay. Okay, sorry about the snafu. In any case, capture-recapture models involve repeatedly sampling a population over time and obtaining what we call individual encounter history data, which is just, just a sequence of binary random variables that indicate whether or not an individual is captured during one of these samples are not captured, shown here as ones for captured and ones for not. Um, Capture-recapture models are, in a sense, the canonical class of models for this type of individual encounter history data. Um, and these capture-recapture models involve parameters that describe both the population structure in the form of things like survival probability and population size and also parameters that describe the observation process in the form of how um, the, the probability of encounter of individuals. Modeling the observation process is important uh, and when we sample animal populations because in real problems there's a portion of the population that is unobserved. And so in a sense, capture-recapture models allow us to extrapolate information from the sample that we observe to the population that we care about as, as ecologists. Um, the use of capture-recapture methods has really increased with the advent of new technologies for sampling populations, including non-invasive methods based on, on genetics or camera trapping. <laughs> These new technologies have profoundly affected the study of animal populations in two ways. First, we can study species that historically could not be studied effectively because it, they were difficult or impossible to capture and physically handle. Uh, being able to sample those species with non-invasive methods makes it possible to do population level studies of them. And the second thing that has really been affected by these methods is that they produce abundant quantities of spatial data. One thing that, that has been spurred on by these new technologies is the advent and widespread adoption of capture-recapture methods that use this abundant spatial information. And these are spatial capture-recapture models, which I'll just call SCR for short. SCR is a methodological framework that combines a spatially explicit observation model describing how individuals are observed in space with a, a statistical point process model that describes how individuals are distributed in space. And the goal of SCR models is to achieve statistical inferences about spatial structure of populations um, from observed encounters on a sample of individuals. And there are a couple other talks that are going on this week about um, spatial capture recapture models. The, the, the model for encounter probability depends on some parameters that we need to estimate, but also, and this is the key point, it usually takes the form of some function of Euclidean distance between sample locations 
and a latent variable that we interpret as a home range center, shown here as, as a Gaussian kernel model. So the, the latent variable is, is, the, uh, is the S in the distance metric there. And, and typically, these kinds of stationary and isotropic models, such as Gaussian kernels, are used in practice. Because the home range centers are regarded as latent variables, uh, we, we require a model to account for their uncertain state. A natural model for the population of these latent variables is, a, is to assume them to be a realization of a statistical point process. For example, we could assume that, that they follow a homogeneous point process, the, the classical model of complete spatial randomness. Or we could build more ecologically interesting models, such as inhomogeneous point process models, where the local point density depends on some, some landscape or habitat covariate that's measurable, shown here as a forest cover raster that might affect the locations of, of individuals in this population. Um, in a sense, I think SCR can be thought of as a statistical triangulator. Um, where we use Bayes' rule to combine information about spatial encounters with information um, that describes the distribution of individuals in space um, to provide a characterization of where each individual in the population lives. I show two examples here on the right. These illustrate the propagation of uncertainty about the latent state from individual encounter histories and the variable precision of the information that is due both to the encounter information and the configuration of spatial sampling. So the top panel shows, shows a bear in this case that was captured a large number of times in a, in a few traps that are in close, close proximity, and it shows a very precise estimate of the home range center of that bear. And the example on the bottom shows an individual caught one time around the periphery of the trap array, and it shows a relatively diffuse posterior, not much information about where that bear lives. Um, and this idea extends to the population. Um, by using a spatial model that describes the distribution of individuals in space in the vicinity of, of the sampling, um, we can get spatially explicit estimates of density, shown in this picture as an estimate of the posterior mean of the point process intensity function from the study of bears that happened in New York. So the point of this is that SCR models allow us to refine and, in essence, um, downscale population level quantity, which is the size of the population, um, to more um, local information about where individuals live within a population. <coughs> now, I said earlier that a key feature of SCR was a model for the detection probability or the encounter probability that was usually a, a Euclidean distance model relating sample locations to a variable that we, uh, that we call a home range center or an activity range or activity center of an individual. The deficiency of this model is it's stationary and isotropic, which is probably not a very good model to describe how individuals in real populations interact with real landscapes. Um, but there's no reason we have to settle for such models. We can, we can develop and, and fit models involving distance metrics that are non-stationary and, and anisotropic, and that's where my work with people here at Cornell has, has been focused for the last few years, and that's how this ties into some problems of, of uh, co um, computational sustainability. Um, for example, we can choose a distance metrics that, metric that depends on least cost path, where cost is parameterized in terms of some measurable covariate that affects how individuals move, move through the landscape. So by substituting this least cost path distance into the model for how we encounter individuals, we wind up with another parameter called alpha 2 here, which is related to the resistance of the landscape to movement. And that's a parameter that we can estimate now just from empirical data from sampling population, uh, animal populations. And the, and the reason this is important, I think, from a computational sustainability standpoint is um, my summary slide here, it, it, SCR gives us the ability to formalize statistical inference about landscape connectivity from individual encounter history data 
of the type that are routinely collected, but historically never used for these purposes. So people have always collected this kind of encounter data, but never used it for formal inference about how individuals interact with a landscape. Um, at the same time, SCR provides a framework for explicit inference about st uh, spatial variation and density, and we can think about devising various metrics that use these two things individually or in combination to make decisions about landscape conservation and management. And that was the key point of Angela Fuller's talk yesterday, and uh, Amrita Gupta also um, has a poster that talks about the optimization, the computational optimization part of this, um, this problem. So, um, so with that, I'll, uh, that's it for me. If anybody has one question, I'll be glad to take a question. Hmm. So what are the decisions that you're trying to make about landscape? So, so you, the decisions, I guess you should go read Amrita's poster, but, but it has to do with conserving a parcel or not, or affecting the use of a parcel, and which, which parcels do you um, allocate money to? So there's both where and, and what to do type of decisions. Thank you. Thank you.